Hi guys, um, let's pick up uh, where we left off from last time. So last time we were talking about the bipolar disorder, a uh, very, very brief overview here. We'll skip all the slides here from which, which we talked about already on Friday of last week, okay? Um, now here are some of those drugs that are listed for bipolar disorder. So we talked about lithium being one of the mostly common prescribed or used medications for bipolar. However, some of the um, exact mechanism of this drug is uncertain and no, we don't really know exactly how it worked inside the body. So here are some of those big headings that um, I have it listed for you here. Inhibit the recycling of inositol substrates. Uh, you know, those are some of the key points to take away inhibition of like Glycogen synthase kinase 3, beta-catena facilitate. So basically changing some of the um, the, um, the transcription um, translation type of uh, level of changes and that uh, changes some of the neuronal uh, connections, increase neuroplasticities, okay? So uh, not much of a detail, at least from my uh, view, uh, from my side of the story. So I think we ended on this. A particular slide last time. All right, so uh, the following couple of slides I'm not going to go over in great details. Those are all anticonvulsants or other uh, drugs that we use in other disorders uh, for SA mood uh, stabilizers. So uh, we're going to talk about anti seizure drugs anyway. So those couple of slides, uh, remaining slides in the bipolar. Uh, portion of this package, you can uh, pretty much uh, skip that. All right, let's go over some of the very, very basic pharmacology of anti-seizure drugs, okay? Some of the basic concepts. Uh, so some uh, I use this particular slide set to for this quick overview summary. Uh, the reason is that this is what you have on hand, so it is easier for you to skip around or cross it out so uh, to follow along with this particular recording. All right, so uh, without further talking, let's get started. All right, like always, I have a drug index uh, that is listed. Um, basically, they are, uh, there are a lot of you know, pharmacological agents that are able to uh, help with seizures, okay? Now, in terms of the practice side of this, uh, the material, uh, it will be on your second exam. So here, I'm just uh, introducing some of these drug classes. Now, you've seen a lot of those, right? The um, benzodiazepines, barbiturates, those are the same benzo, same barbiturates, okay? Uh, in terms of the mechanism, so there aren't that many, uh, you know, in terms of you breaking it down, uh, it, it's not that bad, okay? And now there are also some of those orphan drug or new drugs that, uh, from my side of the view, is I don't know how often they are being used, but I'm just listing here, here uh, for completeness or for future references, you have somewhere to go back to in, uh, in, in, in the cases like that. All right, some of the very, very, very brief overview of uh, what seizure is. Now, seizure are, are were recognized as, as early as 2000 BC. So there's some of those very, very old uh, conditions. And one of the ancient Greek, okay, this Greek philosopher, Hippocrates, so he recognized that this disease is a disease of brain, okay? Um, so that's really the... First classification of seizures. People have observed those for a very, very long time. Um, there are some seizures that have no known causes, okay? It just happened. Some are related to physical abnormalities. A lot of the time, uh, some physical traumas to the brain can lead to seizures down the road. Uh, things like in those days, you know, people go to battles, okay, ancient Greek, you know, battling. And what happened is that sometimes their head got hit by a, a spear or something if they survive that uh, particular injury. Uh, you know, that, that was great, but unfortunately, sometimes, uh, that would still lead to a seizure or conditions that last for a lifetime. Um, so now there are, uh, different classifications and different classifications of seizures, uh, you know, 
with uh, they have particular different treatments along with it. Now again, this uh, particular slide is for your reference. You are not going to memorize it, at least for me. Okay. Now here, just to show you that there are agents that are kind of um, you know, pretty general. Okay, for different types of seizure, absence seizure, myoclonic seizure, partial generalized tonic seizures, and those drugs are likely those that you frequently dispense in your pharmacy if you work in one of those retail or community drug stores. Okay. Now, in terms of thinking about the general um, mechanisms of uh of and all of the anti seizure drugs. So okay, so you think about the um where seizure is coming from or what is it going on. Uh really the seizure is result from a group of abnormal firing uh neurons at the same time. So, okay. They're firing but it in an abnormal uh situations okay and really you know that seizure activity it's spread to uh, a surrounding due to some of the loss of inhibitions right so and that uh, is part of the the problem so uh you're not going to uh memorize some of the particular um uh, events on these two slides here again just some of the uh, broad overview and how they struck at the surrounding ending a part of the uh, you know strategy to uh, decrease excitatory neuron firing is to enhance GABA inhibitions of uh, prolong some of the sodium channel inactivation. Now we're going to talk about sodium channels in greater details. All right. So um, I am uh, really skipping that slide. Uh, don't worry too much. Even though I have a star on there, uh, it's not. Uh, to be, um, you know, paying too much attention at that at this point. Okay, ignore this slide. All right. So, uh, no. So we're not doing some of the team-based learning, but here the idea is, well, so what are the central principles? Okay, how would you, uh, stop these abnormal excitation? Well, first is to decrease the excitatory side of the events. Okay, now the sodium channels are. Uh, related to uh, EPSPs, right? Okay, some of the uh, action potential, you know, if you think of it in a more simplistic way. Uh, so some of the way to decrease excitatory or action potential is, uh, you know, limit the uh, firing, okay, by uh, inhibiting the sodium channel. And there are other channels that are involved, such as this T-type calcium channel, all right, we can also antagonize glutamate. Okay, those are all strategy to decrease excitatory actions. Now, on the inhibitory side of the story, uh, presynaptic. Okay, we can uh, decrease GABA metabolism, prevent re re reuptake. We can also enhance GABA mediated activity through prosynaptic actions. Now, here we talk. We've learned those already, right? Barbitro A, benzo, C, U. Then this way you see how it comes into play in some of the seizure conditions. Now the overall goal is to suppress seizures in the dose that does not cause um, sedations or other CNS toxicity there. Okay. Uriride, okay, there's some of the common uh uh drug anticonvulsant. Now I'm not going to uh pay, put too much attention on this slide. So you can skip this slide. All right. Now here uh, comes to a big class of uh, group of drugs that are called sodium channel blocker. Now before we can talk about sodium channel blocker, uh, we do have to uh, do a little bit review on the sodium channel itself. Now here shows you uh, this is uh, a sodium channel where it has two gates. Okay, one is called the activation gate. One is the inactivation gate, all right? So what happened with this sodium channel is that you really have to follow a sequential order, you know, in terms of opening and closing, right? So I'm going to, sh you know, switch scene to another way that you can see how this sodium channel works by nature, okay? All right, guys. So I am going to act on this sodium channel for you, okay? So sodium channel, uh, really to understand it, it's based on using your two hands, okay? What happened with two hands? So one hand represent is uh, represented by this right hand is the activation gate or active gate, emphasis in activation gate. 
So what happened is that you know in a resting state, all right, your active gate is in a closed position, and your inactivation gate is in an open position. There, right. So that is a resting state. All right, when your uh, early uh, depolarization is arriving, so what happened is that it will uh, lead to the opening of this active gate. So now both gates are in an open position, so it's wide open, your sodium influx is causing further depolarization. So, all right, so that you have this action potential or EPSP being generated. Now, after this action potential is done, uh, your inactivation gate okay is going to close it first okay before so in this closing state we are entering a refactory period okay at this state you know, this channel is inactivated in in a way that uh, no, it will not open again all right so some of those drug sodium channel blocker what happened is that they bind to this inactivation gate okay keep it close okay uh, by heart, okay, keep it close so that uh, you, uh, the, the sodium cannot influx again, cannot generate action potential there again. Okay, so that is the key thing, all right? Active gate and activation gate. I right, hopefully by me, uh, you know, acting it out, you would remember a little bit better on sodium channels. Now, come back, okay. <laughs> Come back with this uh, sodium channel blockers here. Uh, we have the um, first sodium channel blocker, uh, one of those common ones. They are collectively uh, in this hydantoin type of a group. So those include a phenantoin or phosphenantoin. Uh, again, there's a star there. Now you don't have to memorize that star in particular. Again, those structure there are just for FYI information. Now, knowing the how the sodium channel uh, works, okay, now we look at how the sodium channel blocker works. Okay, it really is to stabilize the sodium channel in its inactivate state, okay, by slowing the channel from recovering. In that, in this case, they will uh, prolong the refractory period, right? So basically, they cannot come back to open in the open state where action potential can happen again. So we have this uh, special term to call these sodium channel blocker uh, that use that is called the use dependent blockade. So uh, the drug can only bind to an inactivated gate after open. So if the channel has never been opened, all right, so the drug will not work. Okay, so it's selective for overly active neuron channels. So it's opened and then there is an inactivating gate closed and it keep it uh, in the closing state so that it cannot uh, reopen again and you know, having sodium channel influx and um, activation or action potential again. Like some of the, uh, you know, really the FYI information, phantoin, you can again skip these lines. All right, um, I'm not going to talk about so much on this uh, slide as well. Like a lot of those drug class, this is another drug class that is uh, in the sodium channel blocker uh, uh, group category. Okay, so the main thing here is that you know that this group uh, uh, immunostubines, okay, this immunostubine groups is, uh, you know, channel sodium channel blocker and stabilizes the sodium channel in its inactive state okay so that is the main thing the rest of the story is similar to phenantoin okay all right so we have these in in this uh that whole class we have carbamazepine or oxycarbazepine so they are all uh, the same class and uh here those metabolism uh details uh, i'm not going to test those in details okay um like again we're going back into the gabagenic um uh, uh, drugs okay so here is the review of the GABA A receptors okay so uh, here is a you know showing you the pentamer structures and it is a chloride channel okay by this time you should uh, know this by heart okay GABA A receptor is a chloride channel okay and the endogenous compound is this you know GABA gamma aminobutyric acid GABA all right 
Okay. So again, here are just some of the review. Okay, recap. Now in the past, this slide uh, are on the second exam, so it's been a little bit while, you know, uh, you know, a little bit time lapse between it was first presented. So again, you know this GABA receptor pharmacology in terms of benzoate and barbiturate, right? Again, a little bit recap. Benzodiazepine Z increased frequencies of the channel opens barbiturate rate okay rate is the duration of channel openings okay all right so barbiturate so you know i'm not going to go over that again here are the some of the very similar uh you know information that was presented earlier on all right so uh again you can skip this slide benzo don't worry about the structures okay don't worry about these structures here all right, we're flying through the slides now. Do pay notice on you know what will be uh, taught, okay, uh, by the practice faculty. I believe Dr. Shaw is uh, teaching this year on this topic. Do uh, you know uh, pay special uh, attention of which drug? You know, not all benzo have the indications for seizures. Okay, do get clear those with uh, those information in your head. All right, so here we have a next group of um, uh, channel blockers, okay, the T-type calcium channel blockers. So these T-type calcium channel, they are important voltage-gated ion channel that are particularly uh, rich, okay, or highly, uh, you know, residing in the neurons of the thalamus of the brain, right? So, so they have a little bit, uh, you know, the so-called low threshold T-type, okay, they almost act like a pacemaker, okay, for your normal brain activities, okay, just like your, some of your other calcium channels that are, are responsible for your myocardial, um, you know, your, your heart uh, beating activities, right, okay. So generally, this type of a T-type calcium channel are responsible for uh, in, the, in the absent type of the seizures, okay. One of those uh, big drugs, okay, in this class is called uh, this succinamide, okay, which was, uh, you know, introduced long time ago, okay, over 50, 60 years ago. Um, they have some type of a moiety. Now, don't worry about these moiety. Um, Ethylsysamide is the most effective. So here are just a lot of these, um, you know, uh, information listed there. The main thing is to tie succinamide uh, with the inhibition of T-type calcium channel, okay, T-type calcium channel blocker. So that's the main th message here. But uh, you have we have other um, variants, ethylsesamide, okay. Um, again, so there are um, these information. I won't go into great details there. Now we have uh, things that are called GABA analog. Now we've seen uh, GABA analog a little bit in the anti-anxiolytic type of uh, lectures, okay? Now here we're going to it into a little bit greater detail. So the, the great detail here is just to uh, mainly to get those clear in your head. We have uh, quite a few GABA analog and they all kind of act a little bit different from each other. So you have to uh, be sure, you know, get down to the bare core minimum type of a knowledge, which is knowing the one sentence that is describing its mechanism of actions, okay? Now, being the first one, GABA analog here, we have uh, the Gibbertrand, okay, as a gamma vinyl, uh, gamma GABA, GABA, okay? So it's basically an analog of GABA. That's what I want to say, okay? Um, uh, don't worry too much, uh, you know, uh, on the structure again, all right? So this... Um, like a trend, okay, the mechanism of actions really, you know, with this star is important, okay, it, it irreversibly inhibit GABA transaminase, okay, it decreased the breakdown of GABA and, okay, therefore increasing the concentration of GABA in the CNS, now it takes about uh, two to four weeks to see peak therapeutic effect, okay, don't worry about the bioavailability there, okay, match the gibbertrin, um, no, the gibbertrin, yes, the gibbertrin with irreversibly inhibition of GABA transaminase, okay, that bolded statement, that star is what you would like to uh, remember that, okay. Now, uh, we have other, okay, 
uh, GABA analog here is GABA pentane. Okay, GABA pentane, you know, uh, they are a little bit more lipid soluble. Okay, so that they can cross the bubbling barrier relatively easy. Right, so what are the GABA pentane um, pharmacologies? Okay, they are again the analog. Okay, uh, they, they, they design as a GABA agonist. Again, they do not appear to act on the GABA receptors. Okay, so they are a little bit uh, different. Okay, they, uh, what we've seen is that they bind to presynaptic voltage sensitive calcium channel and inhibit the release of glutamate okay so remember those you know in uh, influx of calcium ions and then lead to release of trans neurotransmitter so this is what happening okay it, it it stopped okay some of those uh influx of calcium and then therefore inhibit the release of glutamate all right, so we have uh, the third GABA analog, which is pregabalin. Okay, so same mechanism as gabapentin. Okay, same so same mechanism. So you need to match those uh, together. Now I'm going to show you a table at the end of this uh, particular uh, deck of slides, so that you it will help you get things organized on paper and hopefully in your head. All right, so we have this GABA analog the third or, or the fourth one okay the last GABA analog we're going to talk about is called the tiagabin okay tiagabin bound to GABA transporter a transporter one or get one okay now this transporter is a reuptake transporter so it acts as an inhibitor of this reuptake so it is a reuptake inhibitor in a sense okay tiagabin is a reuptake inhibitor now if you want to uh try to remember that you know the t okay tiagabin the t matches transporter the t okay so that way you can remember a little bit okay um the rest of it don't really have a t at the beginning so okay so i guess that works in one way all right so uh there are a lot of miscellaneous agent that are for the conditions okay um now being uh, one of those uh more common one is this uh valproic acid okay or valporate okay depending on if it is ionized or deionized okay um so the deprotonator or not okay that's what i mean all right don't worry too much about um this slide here we can go right into the pharmacology of valproic acid all right so it have three Okay, three listed um, uh, mechanisms. Okay, first being prolonged recovery of voltage activated sodium channel from inactivation. So it is a sodium channel blocker. Okay, uh, second, have a small reduction of the uh, the T type. Okay, uh, calcium current. And in vitro, it also stimulates the activity of GABA synthetic enzyme. So it helped uh, make more. GABA in a sense and also stop GABA degradation, stop this GABA degenerative enzyme, the GABA transaminase. All right, so it have a couple of these mechanisms of actions there. Topiramate, all right, topiramate again, it is it blocks voltage dependent sodium channel. So you can see that this uh, chapter or this topic really uh, it's tied greatly into this sodium channels okay so it is really important for you to know how sodium channel works and also how sodium channel blockers work collectively okay so uh, on top of sodium channel blocking it also help uh, with this um, uh, GABA effect you know it appears that it binding to somewhere uh, barbiturate or benzo doesn't bind okay a Side different from those two class of drugs, so it helps GABA, okay. But how we don't really know for sure. But also block some of the activation, so it block the glutamic receptors, glutamate receptors. So it stops some of the uh, positive side of the story or the act, the action potential side of the story. All right. So fel felbamate, felbamate inhibit uh, MMDA, so a glutamate receptor, so it can inhibit a excitatory channel, okay, so that's the main message. And it can also help some of the um, inhibitory channel effect, okay. Lomotrigine, okay, lomotrigine, one of those uh, more common ones, so I remember, uh, you know, dispensing a lot of those in pharmacy when I was interning. Like, so, uh, lomo lomato, okay, so it appears to delay the recovery from inactivation of 
voltage dependent sodium channel. So again, this is a sodium channel blocker. So by the end, probably it's good that you have a list of sodium channel blockers. Okay, most of them work on, not all, but most of them work on it. Right, uh, so we have some other uh, sulfonamide derivatives. So some of the rare, more rare agents, I believe. So they help, uh, they inhibit the T-type uh, calcium channels. Okay, and also um, have some of the actions in the spinal cord, uh, you know, neurons, which uh, are again prolong and inactivate, uh, prolong the inactivated state of sodium channels. Okay, so that are similar to phenytoin, cabamazepines, and all these. Um, all right, so we are, I'm going to skip uh, this drugs, you know, uh, some of these more. Uh, I, I didn't even put a, a star there, so I'm gonna. Um, skip some of these but if you look into the slide they are somehow tied into sodium channels that I want to say all right so here we have a potassium channel uh, agents okay so this one is uh, as gabba okay uh, it stabilized you know the particular name of these uh, potassium channels uh, potassium channel 7.2, 7.5, don't worry about those numbers, okay? Uh, basically, it uh, help with the produce some of the hyperpolarization shift, okay? Increase channel opening time, decrease channel over time, reduce excitability, excitability. Now, the main thing about this drug, it has no effect on cardiac potassium channels, okay? Rafenamide, uh, again, another sodium channel blockers. All right, so we have some of these uh, newer agents that are on the market that I listed here. Uh, I'm I'm not sure how commonly they're used, okay, in practice in clinic. Uh, just for completeness, I'm uh, listing uh, the the general mechanisms of actions that are uh, that I can find. All right, for viewing pressure, so this is a graphical summary. All right, you can draw out the neurons and you know write down some of the channels and list out what type of a drug that are interacting with what uh, channel. Now here is the big catch, right? I'm moving my mouse over there and and you know highlighting for you guys the sodium channel blockers. Wow, a whole load of those are acting on sodium channel. So that is a bigger, bigger, biggest uh, message to take away from anti seizure drugs. All right, so now coming to the end, we have the table uh, showing you, um, you know, nicely lined up with the different type of a pharmacological uh, site, okay, sodium channel blockers or, or, or the actions, okay, uh, T-type calcium channel blockers, you know, something uh, do with the GABA, okay, now GABA, you need to find it differentiate. Some are prolonged opening, some are increasing frequency, some inhibit GABA metabolisms, okay, some inhibit GABA reuptake, and some are doing having opposite actions of the excitatory amino acid. Yeah. Now here are some of the more common drugs that are available for this uh, seizure disorder that I listed on the co in the vertical column. Now, now I have this last slide or last table where <coughs> it marked, okay, the X mark there indicating the major mechanisms there. Now if it is a question mark on there, uh, it's sometimes it, you know, debatable. I won't ask debatable boxes, okay. Some of the definite clear cross mark is something that are uh, definitely you need to commit to memory at the minimum for this anti seizure medications, okay. So I you need to remember uh this camazepine and sodium channel blocker, okay. Uh, the poor acid note there are one two three three uh. uh mechanism of actions now inhibit GABA metabolism we observe in vitro now is it happening inside the body we cannot be so sure all right tiagabin okay it is you know that t and t okay matching of the uh inhibit of GABA uh, reuptake transporter okay so likewise so uh it is helpful for you to um to make some list you know write it down on your own uh, you know, use the table, the empty table here for yourself for study and using this, uh, you know, final, uh, you know, table here to um, uh, to verify, okay, how much you remember. All right, so uh, that's the end of this uh, very quick 
rundown of the uh, uh, anti-seizure drugs. Uh, I skip a lot of the uh, the key thing. The really down to the bottom, the key thing is this table. Okay, the very very minimum thing you want to look at is this table and um for anti-seizure drugs. So I promise you, uh, this uh you know video is within thirty minutes or so. So I did my promise. All right. So good luck studying on this chapter and uh look for another video that are even more condensed that summarizes. Uh, some of the key thing for the exam coming up this Friday, that is February 28th. All right, thank you.